So hi everyone and welcome to this video on uh, a discussion on the Carnot model but this time with the assumption of differentiated products. Now uh, in, in the field of oligopoly there are certain oligopoly models which are non-cooperative and this means that firms in the market don't really interact with each other they act independently but they sell products with uh, some level of differentiation. And to increase profits, what firms often do is they devote considerable resources to differentiating their products from their competitors. And they do that in terms of quantity, of, of their style, their variations, the warranties, guarantees, special service features, and product advertising. And it's unlike the case that we've had before we're in the products were not necessarily differentiated. So the key to understanding this sort of uh, short uh, module is really that product differentiation can certainly affect the, the way that consumers characterize the demand for that specific good. And it's unlike the case when firms in the industry provide identical products in which the law of one price uh, holds, right? Uh, but in this case, the law of one price may not hold uh, when the oligopolistic firms can sell differentiated products because the people who demand may now have preferences about which suppliers to purchase the product from. They, they have a certain inclination for one brand or one firm to another because of the differentiation in the products. So let's discuss the Carnot uh, model, but under uh, differentiated products and uh, the assumptions are actually quite similar in that the firm acts independently in that it doesn't know and never learns that the other firm also behaves upon the assumption that its rival firms uh, sort of set uh, on the rival firms uh, output in this case so rival firms output they consider that uh, as an independent setting and if you recall from our previous discussion on the Carnot model, that's actually our zero conjectural variation assumption. And it just states that uh, the two firms choose and announce their output levels simultaneously. So if we examine the behavior of a representative firm, say firm I, then the problem of that firm is to choose a level of quantity that can maximize its profit given the Carnot assumption. So remember, the goal of that firm is to be able to maximize profit I, which is uh, some level of QI, noting the zero conjectural variation uh, QJ is equal to zero, right? I is not equal to J. Then uh, it's trying to maximize its profit, which is just revenue I minus cost I, which is equal to PI times QI minus CI QI minus its cost, right? So this part here is revenue I. And we know that the price in the market is some function of the quantity of that firm and the quantity of the other firm. Uh, so th that's how the price is determined times the quantity that the firm produces minus its cost, right? So we can re-express it as that. Then if we solve for it, right, uh, if we solve for the maximum profit, so for max profit, right, the FOC would be that we need to uh, derive the profit function with respect to the quantity of firm I and equate that to zero. Then for the SOC, right, that's just this proving that we're at a maximum. So the second order derivative should be negative. And we can show that uh, the firm's FOC implies that, right, as we concluded before, that MRI should be equal to MCI. So this is, again, our condition for a maximum profit. So uh, how do we obtain the Carnot quantities? Well, we obtain them by simultaneously solving the two firms' best response functions, right? And the Carnot equilibrium prices are obtained by substituting those quantities to the firm's demand functions. But uh, before, we just had essentially one demand function, in, in which case, right, the law of one price will prevail. But in this case, when you have differentiated products, that might not be the case. So let's go to an example of that. So suppose there are only two firms in the market and that they produce uh, differentiated goods, right? And because of the differentiation, right, because of this uh, difference, uh, because of that difference, 
the products of the firms are like imperfect substitutes, right? And what happens is there are now two demand functions. If you recall our previous kernel case, there was just one. Now there are two. You have one demand function for firm one and one demand function for firm two. And for simplicity, right, let's assume that the firms have identical cost functions. So the first step is we need to identify the uh, each firm's output reaction function. So we do that, right, by solving the FOC. So done by solving the FOC. And if you recall, the FOC is MRI is equal to MCI, right? So uh, for firm one, firm one, okay? So, uh, so you know, P1 is equal to 197 minus 15.1 Q1 minus 0 0.3 Q2. Therefore, if you get R1, so R1 is just P1, right? Times Q1. So that's uh, this entire function here, demand function times Q1. So you're going to be left with 197Q1 minus 15.1Q1 squared minus 0.3Q1, Q2. And if you take uh, the derivative of that, so dr1 with respect to d, uh, sorry, partial of r1 with respect to partial Q1, this should be equal to mr1. And this is equal to 197 minus uh, 2 times 15.1, that's 30.2 Q1, minus 0 0.3 Q2, right? And uh, you, you know that the marginal cost, right, is just equal to the derivative, right, of the cost function with respect to Q1. And the cost function is the same for each firm, so that's just 40. Therefore, if we do MR1 equals MC1, that's going to be equal to 197 minus 30.2 Q1 minus uh, 0 0.3 Q2 equal to 40. If we isolate out Q1, right, so we're going to isolate out Q1, we get that Q1 is equal to 157 minus 0 0.3 Q2 all over 30.2. And this is the ORF, or the output reaction function, of firm 1. And we do essentially the same procedure for firm 2. So for firm 2, okay, so what we do is P2 is equal to 490 minus 10Q2 minus 6Q1. Again, we divide everything uh, uh, Q1, okay. We divide everything here uh, by, uh, uh, I'm sorry, divide, we multiply by Q2, and we can get R2, which is just P2 times Q2. So we get a 490Q2 minus 10Q2 squared, right, minus uh, 6Q2Q1, right? Then if we take the derivative of that, so partial R2 with respect to Q2, that's MR2, we can get uh, 490, right? So that's 490 minus 20Q2 minus 6Q1. So that's our marginal revenue too. And same, our MC is just DC2 over DQ2. And that's just 40 since they have the same cost function. Then again, we can do MR2 is equal to MC2. So that's just 490 minus 20Q2 minus 6Q1 equal to 40. Then we can uh, isolate everything with respect to Q2, right? So that's 20Q2. Then I transpose this to the other side. So this is 450 uh, minus uh, 6Q1. Then I divide both sides of this by 20, 20, 20. I get uh, Q2 is equal to 450 minus 6Q1 all over 20, right? All over 20. And this is the ORF or the output reaction function of firm 2. Okay, so we've solved that problem of deriving the output reaction functions. Now we're going to use these output reaction functions to solve for the Carnot equilibrium prices and quantities. So what we, what we can do is um, 
the corno uh the corno okay the corno uh equilibrium quantities titties are obtained by simultaneously simultaneously solving the ORFs of firms 1 and 2. So we get uh, Q1 equal to, so if you remember the output reaction function of Q1, that's 157 minus 0 0.3 Q2 uh, uh, over, uh, so over 30.2, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the ORF of firm 2 here right, of firm 2. So we get 157 minus 0 0.3 times 450 minus 6Q1 all over 20 divided by 30.2, right? And we're going to get, uh, if we uh, plug that in, okay, we're going to get, uh, uh, we're going to simplify it and we're going to get a term that's Q1 equal to 5. So we can isolate everything and then transpose and we're going to get Q1 equal to 5. Then for Q2, right, what we can do is you can go to the RF again. So that's 450 minus 6Q1 all over 20. Then you plug in our Q1, which is equal to 5. So that's 450 minus 6 times 5 over 20. You get Q2 is equal to 21. Right, and that's gonna be the Cournot quantity for firm two and for firm one. Right, so that's how you do it. Then, how do you get the prices? Well, you to get the prices, you just plug it back to the inverse demand function. So that's for uh firm one. So that's one ninety seven minus fifteen point one times Q one, uh, which is five minus zero point three times Q two, which is twenty one which means that P1 is equal to 115.20. Solve that on your own time. And the same is true for P2. So that's 490 minus 10 times uh, Q1. I'm sorry, four times Q2 rather. So that's 21 minus 6 times Q1. That's 5. And we're going to get uh, P2 is equal to 250. So uh, that's uh, our discussion on the Cournot model with differentiated products. Again, very similar to a Cournot model with not differentiated products. The main difference really is just that we have two different demand functions, which leads us to have two different quantities and two different prices. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video and thank you very much for your attention.